Good morning, blessed sacrament. Good morning to those viewing at home. Please uh, welcome to this feast of the baptism of the Lord. We have the special grace and honor of having the bishop of our region, Bishop Edward Clark of Our Lady of the Angels region presiding over this liturgy. Uh, as we celebrate the baptism of the Lord and in recognition of our leader and guide and mentor and friend for 10 years here at this parish, Dr. Yolanda Brown. Um, I invite you to please rise. Uh, socially distanced greeting or physically distanced greeting to those around us. Greetings to those at home. And as always, we'll begin the liturgy really praying for peace. Peace in our nation, in our cities, and in our hearts with the prayer of St. Francis. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me so love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O divine master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. So our opening hymn is Come to the River on this Feast of the Baptism. Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. My brothers and sisters, today is a day of thanksgiving. With the whole universal church, of course, we give thanks to the Lord for the celebration of the baptism of Jesus, but in a very special way, 
Because of the baptism of Jesus, we give thanks to the Lord for our own baptism. We thank the Lord for the gifts of the Spirit that come to the church and to us individually from our baptism. And for this community of Blessed Sacrament, we give thanks today for the 10 years of wonderful ministry of Yolanda Brown as the Parish Life Director. So Yolanda, thank you. And we begin this ceremony today, renewing our own baptism uh, as we are once again blessed with these waters of baptism. God our Father, on this day we bless this water reminiscent of the day of our own baptism, and especially calling to mind the baptism of the Lord. Like John, we were not worthy to become members of the community of Christ, but because of Christ's great love for us, he baptized us, he washed us in the waters of baptism. And so we bless this water on this day as we recall to mind the gift of baptism in our own life the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we, we adore, adore you, we, we glorify you, we give, give you thanks for your great, great glory. glory. Lord God, God heavenly, heavenly King, King, O God, God Almighty, Almighty Father, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, Christ only begotten Son, Son, Lord God, God Lamb of God, God Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, 
in, in the, the glory, glory of God, God the Father. The Father. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who when Christ had been baptized in the river Jordan and as the Holy Spirit descended upon him, solemnly declared him your beloved son, grant that your children by adoption, reborn of water and the Holy Spirit, may always be pleasing to you. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated as we listen now to God's word from Scripture. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen one with whom I am pleased, upon whom I have put my spirit. He shall bring forth justice to the nations, not crying out, not shouting, not making his voice heard in the street. A bruised reed he shall not break, and a smoldering wick he shall not quench until he establishes justice on the earth. The coastlands will wait for his teaching. I, the Lord, have called you for the victory of justice. I have grasped you by the hand. I formed you and set you as a covenant of the people, a light for the nations, to open the eyes of the blind to bring out prisoners from confinement and from the dungeon, those who live in darkness. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Ascribe to the Lord, you heavenly powers. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory of his name. Bow down before the Lord majestic in holiness. The Lord will bless his people. people with peace. The voice of the Lord upon the waters, the Lord on the immensity of waters, the voice of the Lord full of power, the voice of the Lord full of splendor. The Lord will bless his people with peace, his people with peace. The God of glory thunders, in his temple they all cry glory. The Lord sat enthroned above the flood, the Lord sits as King forever. The Lord will bless His people with peace, His people with peace.
A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter proceeded to speak to those gathered in the house of Cornelius, saying, In truth, I see that God shows no partiality. Rather, in every nation, whoever fears him and acts uprightly is acceptable to him. You know the word that he sent to the Israelites as he proclaimed peace through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. What has happened all over Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good and healing all those oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. The word of the Lord. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. The heavens were opened and the voice of the Father thundered. This is my beloved Son, listen to him. Hallelujah. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. My friends, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. John tried to prevent him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and yet you are coming to me? Jesus said to him in reply, Allow it now, for thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he allowed him. After Jesus was baptized, he came up from the water, and behold, the heavens were opened for him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and coming upon him. And a voice came from the heavens, saying, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. The renowned British novelist, Evelyn Waugh, had a particular theory about uh, human life that became a, a motif that underlied all of the novels that he wrote. And that particular idea that he had was that every person who is born into this world is born for a particular purpose, a particular thing that that person will do or could do that no one else will ever be born to do. They may never know what it is, or they may be gifted to discover during their life exactly what it was. But there's one specific thing, that if they don't do it, nobody else will. That all of life will have to be adjusted because that thing did not happen. And it described life as a, a great tapestry. Each one of us is privileged to add one particular distinct thread to that tapestry. Our life is that thread. Up close, it may look not like a very nice thing. It may have knots, it may have a tear, it may have a fray, it, it may not be what we think it ought to be. But from a distance, 
All these threads blend together in the most magnificent tapestry of human life. That theme runs through all of Evelyn Waugh's novels. Where did he get such an idea? Really, it was something that he discovered by thinking about his Catholic upbringing, thinking about how he had been taught specifically about baptism. It was about his understanding. He doesn't often bring God into the novels. He's writing for a secular audience. He's writing secular stories. But in the back of his mind, underlying all of it, God is the one who directs it. Each person is created for a particular moment in time, a particular thread to the great tapestry of life. So his ideas tie in very much with what we celebrate today because we not only celebrate the baptism of the Lord, something that happened centuries ago, but we also celebrate our own baptism, something that is right here and right now. Looking at the baptism of the Lord in these three magnificent scripture readings today, they really present to us towering images if we stop and think about it. The first reading is from Isaiah. Isaiah, probably the greatest prophet that the Hebrew nation ever knew. The prophet of the restoration. In the midst of their exile, in the midst of their separation from their homeland, from their temple, from their religious practice, he gives them a sign of hope. A Messiah is coming. The Messiah will be sent. He's the Messiah. He's the prophet of this Christmas season because he foretold the coming of the great Messiah who would heal the wounds of society, restore the people of Israel, give sight to the blind, healing to those who are ill, proclaiming God's gift to the people. And so we have this towering figure of this prophet who, whose very presence was both a sign of hope and also a sign of fear, to be in the presence of such a great person. Even the kings of Israel were bowed down before Isaiah the prophet. And here he is proclaiming the coming of the Messiah. And then John in the gospel, baptizes the Lord. The Lord comes to him. I wish to be baptized, John, by you. And John says, no, Lord, it is I who should be baptized by you. You are the innocent one. You are the one without sin. My baptism is a baptism of repentance. And Jesus says, no, it is right to do this. Not because... Jesus had sin, he had no sin, but because he wanted to be identified with us who have sin. He wanted to be one with the people he was called to lead into the kingdom of God. But even more important than the baptism for the forgiveness of sin was that this was the moment when Jesus' mission was proclaimed. This was the moment when the whole world was to know why Jesus came into the world. He was the innocent lamb led to the slaughter for the sins of the nation. His mission as Messiah begins today, begins with his baptism. The heavens open. This is my beloved son. Imagine yourself being there at that moment. Imagine being in the crowd, perhaps one of those seeking to be baptized by John, and experiencing this incredible moment when the voice of God proclaims, this is my beloved son. Now begins his mission. And then the second reading, again, towering figures, Peter, for the first time asserting himself as the true successor of Jesus, his vicar, as the one who leads the apostles. 
There's a division about this man, Cornelius. He's not Jewish, he's Roman. And yet Cornelius wants to be baptized into this Christian community, these followers of Jesus. And some of the apostles says, no, because he's not Jewish. They have to be Jewish to come into the kingdom. And Peter makes a decision. God's kingdom is not just for Jewish people. It's for the whole world. And Cornelius is baptized into this baptism that began with John at the River Jordan and found its full meaning in the crucifixion and resurrection of Christ. Peter makes the decision. These towering figures of our Christian tradition that make us pause and think, what is baptism all about? For most of us, our understanding of baptism is probably rather simple. It takes away sin. Huh? We are baptized to take away our sin. Augustine would later def define it as the taking away of original sin, a sin in which we are all born, but into which Christ was not born. It's also the moment of entering into the church. We understand that. We are baptized into membership in the church. And most of us, pretty much our understanding of baptism stops at that moment. But there's so much more to the church's understanding of baptism. One of the great teachings that came out of the Second Vatican Council was to recapture the early tradition of the church about the charisms the charisms that come into our life at baptism. That at our baptism, God not only forgives original sin, not only enters us into the community of Christ, but gives to each one of us a mission, as Jesus was given a mission at his baptism. With that mission comes the charism, the gift of the Spirit, for us to be able to fulfill whatever that mission is. And here's the point that ties us to the thought of evil and Wab. That each one of us is given a unique charism. We're not all given the same one. Each of us is given a particular charism for building up the church, advancing the kingdom of God on earth leading the world back into full restoration with the original divine plan of God. Each of us has given that gift, the gift of the Spirit. We may not know what our gift is. If we discern it, discern it carefully in our life, we will come to discover what particular gift God has given us. St. Paul who gave us our first real understanding of charism, delineates some of the charisms, by no means all of them, only a drop in the numbers of charisms, but the ones that he knows every Christian community will have. There will be apostles and evangelists and prophets and teachers. There will be leaders of the community. There will be those who will be generous in donation and those who will be generous in listening. Each one of us, those particular charisms, he expects to find in every Christian community. But beyond it are countless other gifts of the Spirit that if every one of us was to use our gift, the church would become fully alive. And until the day when we discover and use all of our charisms, the church will never be everything it is called to be. It's for us to discover exactly what is our charism in life. Some of the charisms may be very simple. We know the people who have a special gift of communicating the gospel of Christ, the teaching of Christ to others. If they have that gift, they're called to use it. Many of them as teachers or catechists within the church. Others may have a gift for organization, for leadership, for administration, either in small societies or individual groups, a gift of leadership, a true charism. 
We know the people who have a charism of sympathy, of listening, who are able to hear and see the pain of other people and are willing to reach out and be present to them. We know those who have a gift of generosity, who see the needs of others, whether they're physical needs or spiritual needs or psychological needs or whatever it is, who are willing to give of their time in order to assist people by listening to them, guiding them, understanding them, sharing sympathy with them. And beyond that, innumerable numbers of gifts of the Spirit. These come to us from baptism. We celebrate these charisms today. And in a very special way, we give thanks to the Second Vatican Council, where the bishops of that time brought back to us a teaching that had not been lost, but the term had been lost. The, the understanding of these gifts was there, but the word charism had got lost in transition, translation, as they say, lost in history, brought back to us in a renewed understanding and, and sense of how the Spirit of God works in the church, works in each one of us, so that every one of us is indispensable. Every one of us is, is absolutely necessary for the church to be fully the church of Jesus Christ. And we give thanks when people discover their charism and use it. We see parishes that come alive as more and more people actively take on roles within the local community, roles of service, roles of accompaniment, roles of spiritual guidance. And today, in a very special way, we're giving thanks to God for the 10 years of service that Yolanda has given to this community of Blessed Sacrament. And the eight years before that, that she was at Dolores Mission and certainly imbued the spirit of, of the Jesuit community to bring that here as the pastoral leader of this parish community. Yolanda's gift, she discerned along the way. She was called to a gift of service to the people of God. She chose to work originally among, among the poorest parishes of the diocese to assist people who were homeless and people who were in need. And she brought that same consciousness, that same awareness to this community. The Jesuits discerned her gift for ministry and leadership. And so from being a parish life associate with Doris Mission, they chose to propose her to the Archbishop to be, or to the Cardinal originally, to be the parish life director here at Blessed Sacrament Parish. Yolanda's gifts, you all know them. We don't have to enumerate them, but they are have been a wonderful complement to this parish of Blessed Sacrament. Through her, many, many more people have become active leaders and members of this parish community. Because of her, Blessed Sacrament has become a much more visible presence here at the heart of Hollywood, especially with the service to the homeless and the poor, a particular love of her heart. Welcoming also the institution of the Jewish, of the Jesuit Center here to help the homeless in this part of the great city of Los Angeles. But without enumerating all of those things, we can also give thanks to God that Yolanda has used her charisms well, charisms born of her baptism, charisms that we also experience in our lives to lead others. Some charisms are very public, others are maybe only known to a few, but all of them are essential to bringing alive the Church of Christ. I want to end this sermon in thanksgiving to God for our charisms and for Yolanda's charisms with a wonderful reading from the Book of Prophets, actually the very last chapter 
of the Book of Prophets, where the writer of, I'm sorry, Proverbs, uh, the writer of Proverbs presents the image of the faithful wife. If you listen to these, you realize that the charism that he speaks of is one not only of the family of the home, but of the wider society as well, a real sign of leadership. I think that in so many ways, if we listen to this reading from Proverbs, we see reflected in it like a mirror what Yolanda has done here at Blessed Sacrament Parish. When one finds a worthy wife, her value is far beyond pearls. Her husband entrusting his heart to her has an unfailing prize. She brings him good and not evil all the days of her life. She obtains wool and flax and makes cloth with skillful hands. Like merchant ships, she secures her provisions from afar. She rises while it is still night and distributes food to her household. She picks out a field to purchase. Out of her earnings, she plants a vineyard. She is girt about with strength and sturdy are her arms. She enjoys the success of her dealings. At night, her lamp is undimmed. She puts her hands to the distaff her fingers ply the spindle. She reaches out her hands to the poor and extends her arms to the needy. She fears not the snow for her household. All of her charges are doubly clothed. She makes her own coverlets, fine linen, purple are her clothing. Her husband is prominent in the city gates as he sits with the elders of the land. She makes garments and sells them and stocks the merchants with belts. She is clothed with strength and dignity and she laughs at the days to come. She opens her mouth in wisdom and on her tongue is kindly counsel. She watches the conduct of her household and eats not her food in idleness. Her children rise up and praise her. Her husband too extols her. Many are the women of proven worth, but you have exalted, exceeded all of them. Charm is deceptive, beauty is fleeting. The woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. So give her a reward for her labors and let her works praise her at the city gates. Let us stand together as God's people as we make our profession of faith in the Holy Trinity. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and, and earth, earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We, we believe in one Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, Christ the, the only begotten Son of God, God eternally Lord, begotten Lord, of the Father, Lord, Jesus, God from God, God light, light from light, light true God, God from true God, God begotten, God, not made, substantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for his salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, he will we'll come, come again, again in glory to judge, to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. 
I believe in one holy, holy Catholic, Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We have been baptized in water and the Spirit of God. As sons and daughters of God, let us bring to God our prayers for the needs of the world. For Christians throughout the world, as they work to manifest God's love in the midst of hardship, apathy, and persecution, let us pray to the Lord. The Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For all the nations of the world, the richest and the poorest, to learn work together, to learn to work together for the common good of all people, especially during this time of the pandemic, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For those who study the stars of the universe or the microbes on the earth, or in other ways seek to unlock the secrets of God's creation for the benefit of all humanity, especially those working for treatments and vaccines for COVID-19. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, prayer. our prayer. For all newborn children, signs of hope for the world and for their parents and families. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the sick and infirm of our community, Orlando Castro, Joyce Holmes, Mark Bogan, Al and Mary Marsala and family, Dr. Jose Perez and family, and for all who suffer from COVID-19. For our recently deceased, Daniel Ayala, Alvina Maltos, Ramon Murillo, Tom Labange, Wayne Bogan, Mary Gladys Garrigan, and for all those who have died from COVID-19, and for the petitions in our box of intentions, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our, our prayer. prayer. For Jeffrey Purdy and Urbano C. Amorin, <coughs> and let us pray in silence for our personal intentions. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear, Lord, our, hear prayer. our prayer. We also pray for Greta Bogan and Armanas Cabrera Manriquez. And in a very special way for Yolanda Brown, we give thanks and pray for her intentions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Heavenly God, you called us to your service through our baptism. Hear are these the prayers we make on behalf of those in need and grant them through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior and Messiah. Amen. 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 Please be seated. And a, a note got hidden, so I would like to also ask that we pray for the souls of Esther Escoto and Therese Pineda. Take a moment to prepare your offering as stewards of our church. Oh, um, I'm sorry. Let us say the generosity prayer of St. Ignatius of Loyola. Lord, teach, teach me, to, me be to be generous. generous. Teach, teach me, me to serve you as you deserve. deserve. To, to give and not to count the cost. cost. To, to fight and, and not to heed the wounds. Bones. To toil and not to seek for rest. To labor and not to ask, ask for reward. Save, save that, that of knowing me. that I do that your I do will. will. Now as we prepare to share God's gifts, oh, I'm, huh. Now take a moment to prepare your offering as stewards of our church. God loves a cheerful giver. Ushers, please come forward and receive our offering.
was a preaching by the shores of Jordan Street. Repent of your sins and let the water wash you clean. Oh, wait in the water. Wait in the water, children, now wait in the water. God's gonna trouble the water. Jesus came to be baptized by John, and when it was done, a voice from the heavens said, This is my beloved Son. Oh, wait in the water. Wait in the water, children, now wait in the water. God's gonna trouble the water. My favor rest upon him, said a voice from above. The crowd saw the spirit in the form of a snow white dove. Oh, wait in the water. Wait in the water, children, now wait in the water. God's gonna trouble the water. Come to the river where the living waters rise. If you want to follow Jesus, you must come and be baptized. Let us pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise, praise and, and glory of his name, name for, for our good and the good of all his holy church. church. Accept, O Lord, the offerings we have brought to honor the revealing of your beloved Son, so that the oblation of your faithful may be transformed into the sacrifice of him who willed in his compassion to wash away the sins of the world and who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For in the waters of the Jordan, you revealed with signs and wonders a new baptism, so that through the voice that came down from heaven, we might come to believe in your word dwelling among us. And by the spirits descending in the likeness of a dove, we might know that Christ, your servant, has been anointed with the oil of gladness and sent to bring the good news to the poor. And so, with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly here on earth and before your majesty, and without end we acclaim. Your glory, 
Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come, until you come, until you come again, until you come, until you come, until you come, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, with Jose, our Archbishop, with his assistant bishops, with Roger, our emeritus archbishop, and with all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, <clears throat> that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the holy apostles and glorious martyrs, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Father who, art who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, the glory are yours now and forever. And Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with each one of you. And with your spirit. Let us acknowledge one another with some sign of peace. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, am I am not worthy, worthy that you should enter under my roof, my roof but only say the word, and my soul, soul shall, be, shall healed. be healed. spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are in the blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart, as though you have already come. I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never be, permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
time to reflect and be with the Lord, we offer this uh, musical interlude, God my Father, uh, in gratitude for God and in gratitude for the gifts of Yolanda, Dr. Brown, to our community. To trust you, help me depend on you alone, help me to love you and have faith like a child. My hands are lifted high, pick me up, hold me close. In your arms, don't let go. Draw me near to your heart. Be with me, God, my Father. Lord, you secure me. When in peace I lie down to sleep, I know you hear me when I pray like a child. My hands are lifted high. Pick me up, hold me close in your arms. Don't let My Father, pick me up, hold me close in your arms, don't let go, draw me near to your heart, be with me, God my Father, I am your child, I am your child. Let us pray. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly entreat your mercy, O Lord, that faithfully listening to your only begotten Son, we may be your children in name and in truth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. I invite you now to please be seated for a special program. Okay. All are invited to the Santo Nino Parish Mass on Sunday, January 24th at 11 a.m. And due to COVID-19 restrictions, the annual One Life LA event will be virtual on January 23rd, 2021. Visit One Life LA website to learn more about it.
Thank you. Well, one of my mother's big disappointments would have been that the Jesuits never taught me more Latin in my formation. That being said, I do know a few expressions, and one closest to my own heart is cura personalis, care of the human person. It was something that was very, very close to Ignatius's own heart. And as we gather together as a community, uh, for this farewell, I cannot help but be reminded of something a supervisor told me when I was a much younger psychologist. She said, Frank, life is a series of hellos and goodbyes. And in therapy, we get a chance to say goodbye well. Bishop Clark, we loved your homily. What gives our life meaning and purpose? are these hellos and goodbyes. I was reminded last night, Alicia had us play, what is it, it's kibbutz, where you ask these questions at our dinner party, and then we see who gets the most answers correct. And speaking of hellos and goodbyes, I couldn't help but be reminded of one of the questions that asked, who was at the installation for Yolanda at Blessed Sacrament? And the answer was, Father Mike Weiler, our provincial, our past provincial, Father Scott Santa Rosa, our current provincial, Father Mike Mandela, our much beloved previous pastor, and last but not least, Bishop Clark, you were there. So in that hello, you started us all off, and today as we gather, Bishop Clark is here to lead us as we also say farewell. And Three thoughts of Cura Personalis came to my mind, Yolanda, as we start to say farewell. First, Yolanda, you've given blood, sweat, and tears to this school. And I couldn't help but be reminded of just a few years ago when we all showed up at Bishop Clark's house for a meeting. And it was so important that we put it all together and Bishop Clark, you had just come out of surgery. You couldn't even get your clerical pants on, but you were in your sweats for that meeting. And you facilitated that meeting with the energy of a 16-year-old. You have really given us so much that we are grateful for at this parish. Your care for all of us has been nothing less than exceptional. So thank you. Secondly, speaking of adolescence with the energy of 16-year-olds, Yolanda, you've come to mind again. And when I thought, where have I seen that the most? Uh, most many of you know Tom LaBonge just passed away. And something Yolanda and Tom had in common was that they loved that monastery of the angels pumpkin bread. And Yolanda was bound and determined to give this pumpkin bread to a benefactor. Unfortunately, when she got in her Mercedes and I was in the passenger seat, the Cloister Sisters had already locked the monastery. And as Yolanda looked over her shoulders and looked at me as if wondering if I could climb the gate, I said, absolutely not. I don't want a Jesuit and a parish life administrator being arrested for breaking into the monastery of the angels. But Yolanda, your energy, Father JT said this when we first began this, I've never seen anyone with the energy and love that you have poured into our Jesuit parish in Hollywood. So thank you. And then last but not least, how do you do a farewell in the middle of a pandemic? I have no idea, but I will tell you when this whole thing began, the only thing we knew for certain, Bishop Clark told us he would be here. And when I knew Bishop Clark said he would be here, I thought we better make sure the province didn't drop the ball. 
So I called Father Chris Weekly at the, our province headquarters in Portland, and I said, Chris, I know it's a hard time for the province right now. We had just had a huge outbreak of COVID with our older Jesuits in Los Gatos. Father Scott, our provincial, was being pushed beyond limit as provincial. And I said, I know you're busy, but could you please send us something for Yolanda's farewell liturgy that we could present to Yolanda? And Chris said, Frank, we've got it. I was on a Zoom meeting, and I'm going to tell you, I've never seen anything like it at the province headquarters. Before I could get out of that Zoom meeting, this video was sent to us. So Yolanda, thank you. On behalf of all of the parishioners, the Jesuit alumni, the unhoused, and the Jesuits, please enjoy. This is just a small token of the province as appreciation for your love and care of all of us. God bless you. Hello, Yolanda. This is your friend, Scott, and I'm so happy to congratulate and thank you after your many years of service as Parish Life Director at Blessed Sacrament Parish. Uh, you have served the folks there so well. I am grateful to you because of all the ways you helped me cut my teeth at Dolores Mission. Uh, you really helped me uh, step into leadership at that important time. And then it was wonderful to see you um, spread your wings and fly across town and become the leader at Blessed Sacrament where you have served so well. We are grateful to you um, because of your good heart, of how much you love people how much you listen to the Spirit, your desire to uh, integrate and be synthetic in just about every thing or way of expressing yourself. I personally am most grateful to you for your friendship and your love for the Society of Jesus. We Jesuits are so grateful for you. So, as you now spread your wings and fly from Blessed Sacrament, please know of our prayers, please know of our gratitude, and above all, know of our love for you, Yolanda. Thank you, felicidades. Un abrazo fuerte. I love Yolanda Brown. I think she is a dynamic force in the parish. She's a dynamic force in uh, Jesuit Ignatian spirituality and ministry in Southern California and has been for a long time. I think her moving from Dolores Mission to Blessed Sacrament has been a great uh, model for parish life ministry work in Southern California. She is one very talented person and has all that sense of, of who, what Blessed Sacrament should be and who it should serve and how it should be a presence in the community. Yolanda, it has been such a privilege and pleasure to work with you through these many years. Your precious spirit is a, such a gift to all of us. Your in leadership has been inspiring both within and beyond the church. Your ability to reach so many is a pure gift, to say nothing of your energy level. We will miss you, but I look forward to seeing, seeing where the Spirit calls you next. In the meantime and always, God bless and keep you, dear friend. Yolanda, well, here's to 10 years of dedication, 10 years of diligent service, 10 years of blood, sweat, and tears so that this parish community can stand, 10 years of collaboration with our Jesuit mission here. Thank you is not enough, really. Uh, we appreciate it. We love you for it. And I know for the many hearts you touched here, we will so miss you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Congratulations, Yolanda. We wish nothing but the best for you in the future. And uh, we wanna thank you for allowing us to participate and serve at Blessed Sacrament School and Parish for these last wonderful eight years. You're the best. Good luck. Good luck. Yolanda, thank you 
You're the reason I'm here. You've been my inspiration, my guardian angel, and a true friend. So I can't let you go. I'm going to hold on to you. And I'll see you soon. Yolanda, on behalf of the whole parish and all the, uh, all the people who work here, we just want to say thank you for all the years of service you've given to our community. We love you, we'll miss you, and we hope the best for you. Many blessings. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Come back and sing. So Yolanda, I can imagine that this is emotionally exhausting. <laughs> and even yesterday, uh, so many tears were shed and I can imagine that many more will be shed today. So on behalf of the entire pastoral team and everyone that works here, I just wanted to say thank you, thank you again. And as a sign of, of our gratitude, I'm gonna give you some more flowers and I've already seen that you've, you've been given so many flowers today. Um, flowers that maybe Leon could plant. Um, <laughs> in your backyard and here, here at the church again. So Yolanda, it's, it seems like two words can't, are just not enough uh, to say thank you for your many years of service here, for all of the relationships that you have helped to nourish and for this community that you have, you have continued uh, to build. Thank you, thank you so, so, so much. Thank you. Wow. Um, just to re-echo again our thanks to you, Yolanda. Um, I mentioned our provincial, Father Scott Santa Rosa, sent greetings on behalf of all of us Jesuits. And in the past 10 years that Yolanda has served here, of course, we have had our Jesuits missioned here and then missioned elsewhere. And over these 10 years, Yolanda has been here, present to the community, a pillar for us, someone that has loved and served diligently. And we absolutely love you for your service. And we have a little token of appreciation from the community and from the staff for your love for us. We pray God's blessing to you in this transition. And uh, thank you. Thank you, Yolanda. Uh, thank you. <laughs> Still receiving gifts, my goodness, thank you for all your generosity. This has always been a parish, a community, family uh, filled with goodness and generosity. Oh my God, I had my back to you all this time sitting in the front, and now that I look out, I pray to God that you remain safe. Uh, 
As a matter of fact, I usually take this opportunity to express gratitude, especially to our welcoming and, and, um, and safety ministry uh, that ensures um, that you are safe. And I just thank you for taking care of yourselves and all of you that are live stream, live streaming with us. I do, uh, I, I must say that this is difficult. And I don't think anyone here thinks that I ever have a lack of words. But this is truly difficult, um, especially having Bishop Clark here, who has become such a dear friend and advocate and supporter. You talk about wisdom. He has never seen anything as a downside. He always finds a way to help identify options. You talk about one of the greatest reimaginators. This is the, the best. And he has made himself available to Blessed Sacrament. I have heard him say many times that Blessed Sacrament is a jewel. It's a jewel not only in the heart of Hollywood, but also in the archdiocese. He loves the Jesuits. He has more Jesuits in his pastoral region than any other of the bishops here in Los Angeles. You are so blessed. I am so blessed. I do want to share briefly some of the joys and love here at Blessed Sacrament. Working with God is the joy of my life. I guess I can call it a charism now that I've learned about it in the homily that it's a charism. It's a natural joy working with God. And so several years when I was a former banker, I did have this burning in my heart and I didn't even realize that that was a Jesuit, um, I guess, a, a magus of a burning in your heart setting the world on fire. But I had been motivated to do more for God, and that is a magis. St. Ignatius taught us that, to do more. So I returned to the fold of the Jesuits and leaving the bank, and you've heard the story, that part of my history. Yes, the Society of Jesus has become more integral than just to my life. It has become my lifestyle. And it does take a lot of energy and focus and timeliness, but my most meaningful mission has been in relationship with each and every single one of you as I look at your faces. With others collaboratively working towards a goal and working with you on mission of course, with my dear Jesuits, you talk about wisdom, and I don't care how many opinions you have. You're wi there's wisdom in every single one of your opinions that help to stretch me and to help me to look at ways and alternatives. To our lay partners, this was a, and has been a parish even long before I came here that had a strong and continues to have a strong Jesuit lay partnership our community and business leaders, politicians and public decision makers. Thank you, Frank, for mentioning Tom LaBange, a dear heart, who would call us regularly and be present right here with the school and with our campus. And our interfaith groups, so much gratitude. I am grateful for the blessings and support and leadership from our dear Archbishop Jose Gomez from the Archdiocese, of course, from Bishop Clark and his entire staff, I must give a shout out to Deacon Scott Palmer, who I think never sleeps. <laughs> and also to our provincial Scott Santa Rosa and to his staff, Father Chris Weekly. And my own, uh, I do have a canonical pastor, Father Ted Gabrielli. And my own pastoral team, who really are my family, because I spend more time with you than obviously I do at my own home. 
my dear precious husband, Leon, you wouldn't believe what an illustrious history he has had in his own career and vocation. And yet he sneaks in here and becomes not the gardener, the landscaper. And he loves it here. He does. Now, my hope for Blessed Sacrament community this year of 2021 is that we do become one. This 2021, that we become one. And that those who are transformed are as a result of our own transformation, becoming as one with each other, so that there is no distinction between the minister and the ministered. There's no distinction between those who are serving and those who are being served. We are graced to have one another. For example, it gives me joy on Sundays to look out at the pews and see among our parishioners and ministers the former unhoused who no longer are considered homeless but are ministers now. And perhaps those who ministered to them exuded such joy and grateful hearts that they couldn't resist desiring some of that, some of that peace and joy and generosity, and they are here with us. And like the wise men, they sought the source of joy and abundance of one who is greater than us. I desire that also for our Hollywood community as those huge towers in the name of development and economic improvement are constructed, that they also recognize that they too must bow down to a source greater than them, to a source more bountiful than any financial institution or community plan. And my final words as I transition at Blessed Sacrament is that the Jesuit Catholic legacy is steadfast. It was here before this church was even established in 1904. The spirit deigned it so that the archdiocese simply acculturated a Catholic model of Jesuit leadership that only our Heavenly Father could imagine or reimagine. The Blessed Sacrament community in Hollywood sustained yesterday, and it continues to thrive today, and it will continue to flourish tomorrow as long as there are people and institutions in need. Because Jesus assured us that there will always be the poor. They are a blessing to us, and they show us how to bring one another closer to God. So bringing people closer to God through spiritual exercises and accompanying the less fortunate, the young, and caring for our environment, our common home, in case you didn't recognize those, that I'm sure our dear Jesuits recognize that those are the four universal apostolic preferences. I will treasure you in my hearts, in my heart. I do feel sometimes I have multiple hearts. I have to because I embrace all of you. I will treasure you in my heart and in my prayers. I do want to thank also our mem board members. Board members who are here with us from the school, thank you for being here. Who are with us on live stream, the board members from the center, and all those that have helped us every step of the way. Thank you as I ask you to keep me in prayer because it's only the Holy Spirit that will continue to connect us and sustain us and guide us. We do truly belong to one another. My spirit remains, and maybe occasionally, at least at one of those Jesuit alumni masses, Father Frank, I might be able to be present. I did graduate from a Jesuit educational institution. <laughs> I am an alumni. Alum, thank you, and God bless you.
Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. We bow our heads before God and ask for his blessing. May God, the source and origin of all blessing, grant you grace, pour out his blessings upon you in abundance, and keep you safe from all harm. Amen. Amen. May he give you integrity in the faith, endurance in hope, and perseverance in charity with holy patience to the end. Amen. Amen. And may he order your days and your deeds in his peace. Grant your prayers in this and in every place and lead you happily to eternal life. Amen. Amen. May Almighty God bless each one of you, your families and loved ones. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our Mass is ended and together as always we go in peace. Thanks be to God. I love Yolanda Brown. I think she is a dynamic force in the parish. She's a dynamic force in uh, Jesuit Ignatian spirituality and ministry in Southern California and has been for a long time. I think her moving from Dolores Mission to Blessed Sacrament has been a great uh, model for uh, parish life ministry work in Southern California. She is one very talented person and has all that sense who, what Blessed Sacrament should be and who it should serve and how it should be a presence in the community. Yolanda, it has been such a privilege and pleasure to work with you through these many years. Your precious spirit is uh, such a gift to all of us. Your leadership has been inspiring both within and beyond the church. Your ability to reach so many is a pure gift, to say nothing of your energy level. We will miss you. 
but I look forward to seeing, seeing where the Spirit calls you next. In the meantime and always, God bless and keep you, dear friend. Congratulations, Yolanda. We wish nothing but the best for you in the future. And uh, we wanna thank you for allowing us to participate and serve at Blessed Sacrament School and Parish for these last wonderful eight years. You're the best. Good luck. Good luck. Yolanda, thank you. You're the reason I'm here. You've been my inspiration, my guardian angel, and a true friend. So I can't let you go. I'm going to hold on to you, and I'll see you soon. Hello, Yolanda. We want to wish you the best. Thank you for 10 years of service to our community. I came back the same time as you did, so I'm glad and blessed, and grateful that you were with us all this time. We wish you the best. We hope that the Lord will be with you always, and that, you know, this is not a goodbye. This is hasta la vista. Our best wishes from Anna, Adriana, and me. Thank you. Thank you. Gracias. Gracias. Hasta la vista. Yolanda, this is Leo, and I want to express what I've expressed many times to you over the years. I want to thank you for your hard work, your incredible dedication to the parish. I want to thank you for trusting the society and walking with it during these years. And I want to wish you the, the very best in your future. I believe the Lord has something great waiting for you in the future. And part of that may be still at Blessed Sacrament Church, but whatever it is, I want to thank you again for your tremendous effort on behalf of all of us. You shouldered a great burden that we didn't have to carry. And I thank you for doing that and your willingness to do that with such great generosity. Yolanda, this is Frank. Just uh... Echoing what I said this morning in the 11 um, o'clock mass, it has been quite a journey together from the center to the food pantry, to the urban sanctuary, to the Jesuit alumni mass. I always am amazed at the energy you bring to something. I always thought from the first time I stepped on our campus that you are able to buy locate the way you are able to be so many places on the parish at so many different times and I have enjoyed our time together. Thank you. So thank you, Yolanda. Um, in this uh, time of transition, you know, you have served for a decade here at Blessed Sacrament. And uh, before then, eight years at Dolores Mission. So 18 years of service with uh, the Jesuit community and our mission. So we thank you for your service amongst us. And thank you for the initiatives that you were able to begin, the relationships you were able to build uh, within the community and also in the Hollywood area and beyond. And we wish you God's blessings as you uh, enter into this time of transition. So thank you for your service. Yolanda, thank you so much for your support with Genevieve's Garden and for all that you've done to help me out with the homeless. Um, I know they appreciate it and I personally appreciate your love and support for the works that we do. God bless you. Thank you, Thank Yolanda. You, Yolanda. Yolanda. <laughs>
Thank you, Yolanda. Yolanda, well, here's to 10 years of dedication, 10 years of diligent service, 10 years of blood, sweat, and tears so that this parish community can stand, 10 years of collaboration with our Jesuit mission here. Thank you is not enough, really. We appreciate it. We love you for it. And I know for the many hearts you touched here, we will so miss you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. on behalf of the whole parish and all the uh, all the people who work here we just want to say thank you for all the years of service you've given to our community we love you we'll miss you and we hope the best for you many blessings thank you